Right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Tonight, we're going to be talking about the Los Angeles Rams. Now, if you've watched this channel this summer, you know our thoughts on the Rams. They're a really solid football team. I was not expecting a 23-0 shutout second half against the playoff opponent in the Seattle Seahawks. It really was an extremely impressive victory. No matter what you think about the Seattle Seahawks, the Rams just threw up 30 without Cooper Cup. No cup, no problem. I mean, we know, we've said this on this channel. Look, everyone's worried about the defense. Oh my God, they're losing all these expensive players. Yeah, that's kind of the point. They won their Super Bowl. I want to keep my defense young, fast, but more importantly, cheap. Defensive players get injured all the freaking time. I still have Matthew Stafford. I still have Cooper Cup. I still have Sean McVay. My offense is going to be, be perfectly fine, and we're in an offensive-driven league at this current point in time. The Rams are going to put up points, and they're going to get wins, and it started off with a bang. Now, they were down 10 to 7 after the first half but the second half man it was a complete and utter domination words cannot do it justice it was a domination they put up 426 yards on seattle's defense they gave up just 180 they threw for 334 yards without wide receiver one in cooper cup ladies and gentlemen welcome back to the channel obviously tonight we're talking about the rams if you guys enjoy it and you like daily nfl content including a couple of rams videos every single week be sure to hit that like button hit that sub button let's try and get 500 likes on today's video tonight's video for this opening day victory so yeah i mean 30 to 13 I mean, it was masterclass. Matthew Stafford, 24, 38, 334 yards, zero touchdowns, but he threw zero interceptions, no turnovers. It was a clean game from the Rams. Now, obviously, without wide receiver one and just, you know, regular season week one, we saw it all across the board in the National Football League this week. Teams start slow, specifically the offense, and it took the Rams' first half offense, it took them a half. Took them a little bit of time to get into their mojo, to get into the swing of things. But people act like Matthew Stafford... I mean, he's 35 years old. I get it. That's an older age. I'm 24. If you asked me a 35-year-old quarterback five years ago, I'd be like, yeah, he's too old. Right now at 24, I'm thinking to myself, like, 35 is not old at all. Like, Matthew Stafford has plenty of years left in the tank. He only played nine games last season, but they weren't great. Keep in mind, the year before that, right? We all know how, how Matthew Stafford's first year as a Los Angeles Ram right now. Kyron Williams, my Notre Dame legend, 15 carries, 52 yards, and two touchdowns. Now, the Rams rushing offense today was abysmal. Cam Akers, this is a crazy stat line, and he's going to bounce back. We know Cam Akers is going to bounce back, but we do want to see heading into week two a better running attack. The Rams in total, 40 carries, 92 yards. We're not mathematicians on this channel. That's 2.3 yards per carry. Cam Akers, 22 rushes, 29 yards. He did have that touchdown. He did have, you know, the long of 12, but 1.3 yards per carry. We got to see that change this upcoming game. The wide receiver room, everybody was worried about it. Every single person was worried about it. Look, 2-2 Atwell, six catches, 119 yards. Puka, the rookie. Puka, the rookie. 10 catches, 119 yards. You have two, you just had two wide receivers catch for 119 yards each. Tyler Higby, the veteran tight end, not even really a veteran. Three catches, 50 yards. He's only 30 years old. Van Jefferson, a lot of hype. A lot of hype coming from Van Jefferson heading into this offseason. Four catches, 24 yards. All of a sudden, with the switch of a button, it feels like, or the switch of a game, the Rams, all of a sudden, the wide receiving core, everyone's, the narrative, what's crazy is the narrative is now going to be like, oh, wow. Yeah, you know what? The Rams might actually have some weapons. That was not the case the entire summer. Tutu Atwell, coming in here, former second round pick, had a great rookie season, only caught 300 ball or 300 yards, 18 balls. He averaged 16.6 yards per catch. We saw something in Tutu Atwell this past season. Puka at BYU, the dude's a stud. The dude just gets open. He's a player's, or he's a coach's player. High IQ, he just finds ways to get open. These are just, you want high IQ football players, and that's exactly what Puka is. Had a great start to his rookie career. This is the fifth round pick, man. We said it all summer. 
every single NFL draft, there's at least 10 wide receivers that come out here. They're drafted, they're undrafted, it doesn't matter. They make an impact in their rookie season. To be honest with you, in the year 2023, I think that number might be closer to at least 20. I feel like in today's era of football, there's at least 20 wide receivers that come out of the NFL draft, or like I said, undrafted, that come out and make an impact in their rookie seasons. We talked about Puka on our Rams videos all summer saying, look, they got something here. If he gets playing time, he's going to make use of it and he's going to stay on the field. And <laughs> judging from no Cooper Cup and his first rookie NFL game, 10 catches, 119 yards, shout out to him. But this Rams defense, Geno Smith, the comeback player of the year, 16 to 26, 112 yards and a touchdown. 112 yards for Geno Smith absolutely unreal now the Seahawks only rushed it 18 times they did rush for 4.7 yards per carry but you know once the second half hit they had to put points on the board the Rams rush defense I thought was fine it's obviously not perfect it's not excellent at this current juncture but it was perfectly fine Geno Smith 112 yards he had no answer the Rams defense is filled with talent we look at guys like Ernest Jones. Ernest Jones to your, you know, typical NFL media outlet. You know, it's like, all right, the Rams, you know what? They won five games last year. We're not going to give them any love. Although it's LA, it's a big market. Maybe we'll talk about them a little bit, but we're mainly going to talk about the Chargers if we're going to talk about LA football team. Ernest Jones, last season, 114 tackles. Now he's a linebacker. Third round pick out of 2021 out of South Carolina. They've got, see, here's the thing we talked about all freaking summer, man. I have my stud on the defensive line in Aaron Donald. I have my stud linebacker in Ernest Jones. And I have a young, hungry, rising secondary. I've always said on this channel, the secondary, I don't need to overpay a safety. I don't need to overpay a cornerback. If I have a lockdown true cornerback, like top five cornerback, yeah, I'll pay him. But I want to keep it cheap. I want to keep it young. I want to keep it fast because defensive players get injured at a higher rate than offensive players. So let's go young. Let's go fast. Let's go for durable players. These are NFL guys, man. It's so crazy the disrespect that this Los Angeles Rams team got this past summer. Now, I know it's one game, but a road victory against a playoff team in the Seattle Seahawks without Cooper Cup, hell yeah, you're going to take that momentum. I don't care that it's week one. I don't care if Seattle played bad. You got to give credit. You got to give respect to this Los Angeles Rams team. Now, listen, before we've said it on this channel, I think the Rams realistically could easily go 10 and 7. They could go 9 and 8. If they stay healthy, they will be an above 500 team. I don't care what the haters say. Their offense is way too high powered to be below 500 if they're healthy. It, it just, they're way too high powered. Matthew Stafford is him. Cooper Cup is him. These are things we know that people forgot about this past summer. It's crazy. I'm very curious what that narrative is going to be. But obviously, you know, the Rams got to keep this going. You know, you got to keep it going. You got to keep this momentum heading into a big ass game against the San Francisco 49ers at home. And it doesn't get much easier the week after that. What is that? Monday night football against at Cincinnati Bengals. We're about to learn. We learned a lot about the Rams today, but we're about to learn even more about the Rams in the upcoming weeks. This was a great game. This was a phenomenal A-plus second half for this Rams squad. Let me know what you guys are thinking. As always, hit that like button, hit that sub button for daily NFL content. But yeah, guys, go ahead. Give me a, give me a letter grade for the Rams performance down below in the comments. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you had a great weekend, and we'll see you next time.